very good morning to and all at the outset i would like to introduce myself i am jvr murthy i am working as lecturer in soft skills in aditya degree college for women kakinada i did my ba biology engineering from ae college of engineering visakhapatnam i earned my post study diploma in communication soft skills from geetam university visakhapatnam i achieved my delta certification from iflu hyderabad BEC certification from British Council Chennai and HITS certification from Wipro Mission Tennis Bangalore. Very recently, I have been awarded a gold medal and a silver medal from IIT Madras for my excellent performance in NPTEL English Language Based for Computer Examinations and NPTEL Technical English for Engineers. I started my teaching career in 1999. In the last 20 years of my teaching career, I have taken thousands of English classes for several competitive examinations such as GRE, TOEFL, IELTS, GMAT, Cambridge SOL, CAT, MAT, Campus Achievement Training, ISET, BANKS, RRB, SSC, LIC, CDS, NDA, GATE. IES and PSUs Today it gives me immense pleasure to stand before you on this occasion to speak a few words about English syllabus for competitive examinations If you think of any competitive examination conducted in India English part prescribed for the written test of the examination is broadly divided into four different areas they are functional grammar vocabulary or reading comprehension and writing skills any if you take any competitive examination it focuses on these four important aspects so in this video i would like to describe all the fundamental four basic aspects of the written test in detail number 1 functional grammar this is the most important aspect of any competitive examination in fact grammar is a branch of science which mainly deals with the study of the construction of an effective and flawless sentence in english this part consists of many fundamental areas if you want to prepare for the grammar section of any competitive examination you need to focus on the following elements number 1 parts of speech subject verb agreement articles prepositions conjunctions tenses condition clauses voice reported speech wishes casuals subjunctives participles infinitives gerunds auxiliaries errors sentence improvement or structure close test sequence idioms and phrases phrasal verbs analysis and the synthesis of sentences these are the most important essential elements where you need to focus to prepare for the functional grammar section of any competitive examination generally in your earlier classes you might have studied about parts of speech the names of nouns the pronouns the verbs the adverbs the adjectives prepositions conjunctions and interjections but if you want to prepare for the competitive examinations you need to study the concepts in depth for example if you take verbs generally most of the verbs are followed by adverbs only by there are some verbs in english language they are followed by adjectives let's have a look look find feel seem appear sense smell taste sound hear become remain emerge turn prove get keep be am is are was and were if you take any one of the above stated verbs they are followed by adjectives very clear all the remaining verbs are followed by adverbs that is a fundamental difference between the preparation for academic examination and competitive examination similarly we have a notion that 
An adverb ends with the L-Y only. But there are many adverbs in English which don't end with, end with L-Y. Fast, hard, late, soon, today, tomorrow, next day, often, never, seldom. This kind of adverbs don't have L-Y. But they are all adverbs. Similarly, there are some words in English they function as both adjectives and adverbs. Example, fast, hard, late, early. These kind of words are used both as adjectives and adverbs. These are all the nuances. So with regard to the parts of speech, you need to prepare this kind of nuances. Very, very important. Now let's come to subject and verb agreement. In this topic, you need to prepare what is a noun, types of nouns, complete classification of nouns, count nouns and non-count nouns, differences between count nouns and non-count nouns, transformation of a count noun to non-count noun and vice versa, quantifiers and their applications, nouns which function as both count and non-count nouns, nouns conveying different meanings in singular form and plural form, nouns which are always singular, nouns which are always plural, nouns which are both singular and plural, pair of nouns, connectors and their applications. In the subject and verb part, subject and verb agreement part, you need to augment your language in this way. Similarly, you take pronouns. What are the combination of pronouns? What are the combinations of nouns and pronouns you need to study? And what are the applications of connectors with the pronouns and with the combination of nouns and pronouns? If you keep on adding connectors, what kind of changes will occur? Now I come to articles. In the topic of articles, you need to study what are the uses of A, what are the uses of AN, what are the uses of the, and what are the cases where no article is used. Next, prepositions. In the context of prepositions, you need to study a topic called words with appropriate prepositions. A word is given to you, you need to identify what preposition is used along with the word. For example, I take the word, India is abundant dash human resources in, abundant in. Do not brood dash past failures, brood over. I would like to partake dash your humble request, partake of. The villagers are steep dash stupendous ignorance, steep in. Do not stoop dash any best conclusions at this stage. Stoop to, like that, a word is given, you have to identify what preposition is used after the word. Next, conjunctions. Two sentences are given in the middle part of the these two sentences, a small blank is given. To fill the blank, you need to identify what appropriate conjunction is used. These conjunctions are divided into two types. You need to try to prepare like this. One is simple conjunctions and next one is fragile conjunctions. Very, very essential. What are simple conjunctions? When, before, after, if, that, so, therefore, these kind of conjunctions are called simple conjunctions. What are fragile conjunctions? In view of, in view of in the light of, in the face of, as a matter of, on contrary with, contrary to, this kind of conjunctions are called fragile conjunctions. So, with respect to your preparation for conjunctions, you need to study both the things. Next one is the tenses. We know the importance of tenses. Tenses indicate the time sense. In your examination, a verb is given, you need to identify the correct tense form of the verb. Right? When a verb is given, we can frame 12 different tenses. The tenses play an important role in the language. For example, I take a verb called W-R-I-T, right? I write a letter every day. I am writing a letter. Now, I have just written a letter. I have been writing a letter for a long time. I wrote a letter yesterday. By this time yesterday, I was writing a letter. During the whole of yesterday, I was writing a letter. When you came to my home yesterday, I had already written a letter. By this time yesterday, 
I had been writing a letter for a long time. I will write a letter tomorrow. By this time tomorrow, I will be writing a letter. During the whole of tomorrow, I will be writing a long document. When you come to my home tomorrow, I will have written my document. From morning to evening tomorrow, I will have been writing my document. When you come to my home tomorrow, I will have been writing a document for a long time. I have taken a small word called W-R-I-T-E right and I have been able to frame 12 different kinds of tenses. That's very very important. Tenses determine the time sequence of an action. The more your knowledge of tenses, the better will be your ability to frame a sentence on the spot without having to search for the structure of the sentence. The next one is conditional clauses. They are also known as if clauses. There are five kinds of condition clauses. Simple condition, scientific condition, probable condition, unreal condition, improbable condition, and impossible condition. Try to read all the five types of condition clauses. Next voice, active and passive voice. You have to gather the information. Next, reported speech, direct and direct speech. We may call them as direct and direct speech. This context is also very, very vital. Wishes. Generally, we express various kinds of wishes. What are the different types of wishes? Wishes, right? We can say wishes into many categories. General wishes, repeated wishes, present wishes, past wishes, future wishes, unreal or imaginary wishes. There are six categories of wishes are there. You need to gather the data. Casitives. There are some verbs in English language, they don't perform any activity. They make others perform the activity. There are only five casualties in English. Make, let, help, get and have. Try to learn the structures of all the five words. Next, subjectives, very, very important. Subjectives. There are some special words in English language. They are called subjectives. They are called imperative, important, essential, necessary, order, Command, request, require, recommend, suggest, propose, demand, desire. These kind of words are called subjectives. We can frame wonderful structures with these words. Subjectives, you need to gather the information about subjectives. Next one is participles, infinitives, and gerunds. We may call them as non finite words. They are used in non ordinarily, they are not used. They are used in the combination of sentences. We call them as synthesis. Clear? When you want to transform one kind of sentence into another kind of sentence, the knowledge of participles, infinitives and gerunds is very, very vital. For example, I say, standing on the bank of the holy river Yamuna, made of white marble, and he bequeathed to his beloved wife, Muntaz Begum by Shah Jahan, and built by more than 20,000 workers, the Taj Mahal continues to enthrall the attention of Billions and billions of people across the globe. Here I have used all the possibles. Seeing the tiger, I ran away. Present possible. Made of white marble and built by more than 20,000 workers. The Taj Mahal is a great marvel in the world. I have used past possibles. Having completed my work, I went to a cinema. I have used a perfect possible. Similarly, you need to talk about the uses of infinitives. What is infinitive? TO2 plus first form of the verb is called infinitive. You study about the cases of infinitives. Why we use infinitives? Similarly, gerunds. Many people have a mistaken belief that every ing form is a gerund. Now, if an ing form is used either in the place of subject or in the place of object, it is called gerund. Walking is my hobby. Here, walking is a gerund. I enjoy walking. Walking is also a gerund. So like this, you need to study the complete information about participles, infinitives and gerunds. Next one, very important topic in English called auxiliaries. What is the meaning of auxiliary verb? I take a word called W-R-I-T-E right. In all the tenses, if you use a word right with a 12 different tenses, you can indicate only time sequence. But if you want to indicate many other themes of the language, you need to supply some important helping verbs before this verb write. For example, I take will write, would write, shall write, 
should write, can write, could write, may write, might write, need to write, needs to write, need not write, need hardly write, need scarcely write, need only write, ought to write, dare to write, dares to write, dare not write, and must write. Right. If you examine this sequence, here what we are doing is that we have taken a verb W or A T E right and we have added many different auxiliary verbs. In this structure, you have to note down that with the change of the auxiliary verb, the meaning conveyed by the sentence also changes. That's very, very important. I can say that auxiliaries indicate different themes of the sentences. Very clear. You need to study all the themes. Next one is errors. Right? A long sentence is given. It is separated into five different parts. You need to study the sentence very carefully and ident identify the part containing the error. That's very important. Next one is structure or sentence improvement. A long sentence is given. It is broken into two parts. The left hand of the sentence is right and the right part of the sentence is wrong. To replace the wrong part of the sentence, five options are given. You need to examine all the five options of the word and identify the part that is to be used to replace the mistaken part of the sentence in order to improve the structure of the sentence. That is the reason why we call it as improvement of sentence. Next one is close the test. Very important. A long paragraph is given. Between the paragraphs, some blanks are given. You need to study the entire paragraph and below the paragraph, some words are given. Then you need to decide what appropriate word has to be filled in the given blank in order to complete the meaning of the sentence. Clear? Now my question is that if you want to really have a good knowledge of closed test, you must have some important knowledge about articles, prepositions, conjunctions, tenses, auxiliaries and the phrasal verbs. These things are very very essential. I can say that closed test is a combined application of all the things. Next one is sequence. Five sentences are given and the sentences are given in a disordered manner. You need to study the nature of all the sentences and put them in a proper order. That's exactly what you have to do. That's for sequence. Next one is idioms and phrases. Idioms are the special uses in the language. For example, I take an idiom like uh, to let the cat out of the bag. Meaning is to reveal a secret. To bell the cat means to take a risk. Similarly, take to burn the candle at both ends means to spoil the health. There are many wonderful idioms are there. You need to study the meanings of each and every idiom. Next one is phrasal verbs. Very important. What is phrasal verb? The combination of a verb and a preposition is called a phrasal verb. In the phrasal verb part, the verb always remains a constant and the part of the preposition only changes. Clear? With the change of the preposition, the meaning of the phrasal verb also changes. You need to gather the information by referring to a good dictionary. For example, the phrasal verbs are like this. I can say agree to, agree with, agree upon, agree in, abide by, abide with, abound in, abound with. If I take a word called C A L L call, call on, call it. Call for, call off, call in, call into, call up, call down, call over, call out, and call upon. In all the things, my verb call is common, and after call, the preposition is keeping on changing. With the change of the preposition, the meaning of the phrasal verb entirely changes. You have to refer to the dictionary and gather the complete information about this kind of phrasal verbs. So, in the functional grammar part, we have come to know about parts of speech, subject to verb agreement, articles, prepositions, conjunctions, tenses, conditionals, voice, report of speech, wishes, casitus, subjunctives, participles, infinitives, gerunds, auxiliaries, errors, sentence improvement, closites, sequence, idioms and phrases, and phrasal verbs. These are the things on which you need to focus. Now let's come to part two, vocabulary. I can say that vocabulary plays an important role in a majority of content examinations. 
vocabulary is divided into seven different parts there are synonyms antonyms analogies fill in the blanks one word substitutions odd men out and the parents what is synonym a word is given followed by five options you need to understand the meaning of the word and mark a word having the same meaning with the words similarly antonyms you have to mark a word which is exactly opposite in meaning to the given word analogies relation between the words analogies fill in the blanks what is fill in the blank a long sentence is given in the middle part of the sentence there is a small blank to fill the blank five words are given you need to know the meaning of each word and identify a correct word that has to be filled in the part of the blank to complete the meaning of the sentence in some of the competitive examinations we may also call it as sentence completion or a text completion it may be anything next one word substitution is the most important part a long sentence is replaced by a single word that's called one word substitution for example the questions given like that a doctor who specializes in the treatment of medical problems of women gynecologist a doctor who specializes in the treatment of medical problems of men andrologist a highly selfish man egoist an unselfish man altruist a man who loves mankind philanthropist like that clear next odd men out what is odd men out five words are given out of these five words four words are related to each one another in one way and the fifth word is entirely different you need to study all the five words and identify a word that does not bear the same relation to the given words that's very very important odd men out next one is paronyms confusable words english is a very special and peculiar language there are many words in english language they are very confusable for example i take the word w r i t e right r i t e right r i o t right r i e h t right w r i e h t right the pronunciation of the words is the same but the meanings are entirely different their parts of speeches are also different and the applications are also entirely different these kind of words are called paronyms similarly take another word p a r e pair p a i r pair p e e r pair p e a r pair p i r e pair p y r e pair p o r e poor p o u r poor and p o o r poor very very important these kind of words are called confusable words there are many words are there w h i n e y w i n e y w a n e w a n v a n w a n w a n w a n v a i n v a n v a i n v a n that many sets are there clear you have to gather the complete information about this kind of confusable words right so in the part of this vocabulary part for the purpose of the study of a grammar i would like to recommend you two important books they are contemporary english grammar structures and composition by david green book number 1 high school english grammar and a composition by renan martin book number 2 if you prepare these two books you can prepare for the grammar part of any competitive examination very well now regarding the vocabulary i would like to advise you to read the two important books number 1 word power made easy by normal lewis second one is balance g r e these two books are very very important right i would like to suggest these two books from the point of view of your preparation for all the above said seven different areas if you read balance g r e book you will be able to enrich your vocabulary which is highly essential in terms of synonyms antonyms fill in the blanks odd men out and paronyms but if you read a normal lewis you will get a lot of knowledge about your one word substitutions i can say that normal lewis is a hub of one word substitutions if right if you read the normal lewis book there are many wonderful words are there like egoist egotist altruist introvert extrovert ambivert misanthrope misogamist 
mesogynous acidic stomach mesologist mesandrus egocentric egomaniac lecher dilatant dabbler novice neophyte thyro greenhorn rookie heridan virago termagant von wiemann hedonist cyberage synagogue symbiosis syndrome symphony excellent words are there all these words belong to the category of one word substitutions so i can say that if you read the book of normal list you will be able to enrich your knowledge of composer these one word substitutions i can say that if you read all the two books you can enrich your knowledge of vocabulary now i come to third part called reading comprehension for the purpose of the development of reading comprehension i would like to request all my beloved students of india to develop the concept of reading any good english newspaper of your choice clear that the only thing you need to do right the best method of developing the most powerful vocabulary is by enriching the knowledge of your synonyms and antonyms clear if you read while going to the contents of the hindu paper if you come across with any difficult word please note it down in a separate test book and identify the meaning of the word and also know the parts of speech of the word clear when you come across with any word of the hindu paper you need to do like that clear even today i started my teaching career almost 20 years ago even today i have been since the right the year 1999 i have been a regular reader of the hindu paper very clear i have been continuously putting in my strenuous and untiring efforts to augment my linguistic competence by going to the contents of the hindu paper there's no end for learning clear we must be a regular regular learner in this next one is writing this is a very very important one because in a majority of examinations you will be required to express your views in writing because in your examination right since today right for a long time i think that for many years the all most of the recruiting agencies in india have been conducting examination through online system right a, a space is given to you within the space you must be able to type the data there i can say that you must be able to use a professional documentation you cannot write a right or you cannot type whatever things you want to type they will evaluate your performance in writing on the basis of your grammar vocabulary and the number of stem words very very clear whenever you want to talk about the stem words a stem word is defined as an important verb that must be used in a sentence in order to construct an effective sentence in the language for example if anybody ask me what are the stem words in the language i can say define describe narrate or reflect highlight showcase explore focus contemplate emphasize delineate portray augment ameliorate accentuate elucidate enunciate expound enumerate and title these kind of words are very very important to represent your thoughts in the form of any profession documentation very clear they are called stem words you need to gather the complete knowledge about the stem words because stem word is most most probably a stem word is a verb so verb means you must be good at using the verb with either tenses or auxiliary is very clear for example i want to write a letter about a fan i want to write a document about a fan a fan is defined as an important electrical equipment that proves to be highly beneficial to provide a sense of comfort to us if you write this kind of sentence then only the people will begin to evaluate ordinary contracts so stem words play an important role in enriching your sense of writing therefore i feel that i have given you the complete and a comprehensive information about functional grammar vocabulary or reading skills and the writing skills in order to achieve success in the first round of written test of any competitive examination and with these very few concluding remarks i would like to take leave at all of you for today therefore i would like to request all my beloved students of india to follow my most valuable piece of advice put forth your efforts in the right direction develop all the above stated skills and achieve culmination in your career with this very few concluding remarks i would like to take leave with all of you for today thank you very much thank you and all